Ronnie Radke is one of the most controversial artists in the scene. Whether it's the constant battle of people bringing up past events from years ago or baiting people on Twitter, Ronnie certainly doesn't shy away from the controversy. Actually, he embraces it, often using it to aid his marketing for upcoming releases. So, how come a musician as talented as Ronnie is one of the most polarizing figures in the scene? Well, let's stop from the beginning and take a journey back in time. Ronnie Radke, whose Sunday name is Ronald Joseph Radke, was born December 15, 1983 in Las Vegas, Nevada. According to the super accurate source Wikipedia, Ronald had a rough upbringing, with his mum being absent from his childhood while abusing drugs. Again, this is according to Wikipedia, Ronnie is part Blackfoot Indian and Portuguese, which I don't know if this is true or not, so I'm sure Ronnie will correct me if it's wrong. From a young age, those around Ronnie said he displayed a profound passion for music and a natural inclination towards artistic expression. Fast forward to his teenage years and Ronnie formed a band in his local scene called 3.0. But it was a second band formed, named Lefty, that would really set him up for the future. Ironically, fate seemed to bring bandmates Max Green and Ronnie together, who would later form Escape the Fate. As Ronnie met Max at a talent show when Ronnie's mic fell and Max picked it up. I met him in high school. I was at a talent show and I was singing and my mic dropped. That's how I met him and he ran and jumped up on stage stage put my mic back on the thing because I, I couldn't yeah. you know I was playing so from what I could see Ronnie started off as a guitarist in the scene but he transitioned into a vocalist oh. The year is 2004, and a 21-year-old Ronnie Radke burst into the scene with Escape the Fate. The lineup in 2004 consisted of Ronnie on lead vocals and primary songwriter, Max Green on bass, Brian Money and Omar Espinosa both on guitar, and Robert Ortiz on drums. Escape the Fate's career really took off in 2005 when they won a local radio contest that was judged by the emo gods My Chemical Romance. This gave the band the opportunity to open for My Chemical Romance's headlining tour, which clearly impressed the bigwigs at Epita Records, signing the band almost immediately after. After. Back in the day, Escape the Fate was that MySpace band, growing hugely in popularity thanks to the platform, but this was also shown in real life too, as thousands of people were turning up to their shows early in their career, which even Epta was surprised by when announcing signing the band. This led to the creation of the ultimate teenage emo playlist in the form of their debut album. I'm biased here, I have a soft spot for this album, but Dying Is Your Latest Fashion was truly ahead of its time, and one quick look at Spotify shows just how often this album was played, with Situations being the flagship single from the album. Situations is a banger, don't get me wrong, but for me, My Apocalypse is probably one of my favourite all-time songs. <laughs> Even this early on, you could see that Ronnie clearly had skills when it came to songwriting and was able to channel his personal experiences into impactful lyrics. But if you're in for a Cinderella story, you're in for a rude awakening. Behind closed doors, Ronnie battled with drug addiction. While he was not outspoken about this at the time, he often reflects on this time period during interviews and said how he abused substances as a coping mechanism, which ultimately led to his destructive behavior. Along with Ronnie abusing drugs, a huge incident happened that would literally change his life forever. There's so much bullshit floating around on the internet regarding this incident, so I'll let the man Ronnie explain it himself. You guys are so stupid. I'm only doing this one time. None of this is accurate. Saying that I murdered somebody and went to prison for only two years. You actually think that I murdered somebody and went to prison for only two years, bro? Do you hear yourself? You're doing this for views. None of this shit is accurate. I didn't go to prison for two years for murder. I didn't go to prison for murder. I went to a fight. I went to fight somebody and they had a gun and they pulled the fucking gun out and shot at me. So my friend shot them and fucking killed them, okay? That's what happened. My friend got self-defense. Nobody got arrested. I'm the only one that got a charge months later for having brass knuckles on me. I pleaded from two felonies to one felony. Two felonies being possession of a dangerous weapon, concealing a dangerous weapon, to one felony, battery which never happened. I never hit anybody. I just pled to one felony. That's what happens when you don't want to go to trial. The DA gives you a less a charge, one felony instead of two, so I don't have to spend longer in prison. They didn't murder anybody. You guys are fucking stupid. So yeah, Ronnie didn't murder anyone. It literally takes two fucking seconds to Google and find that out for yourself, which is the bare minimum you should be doing if you go into label someone as a murderer. I just tested the theory myself and found Ronnie's jail record, which clearly says battery, not murder. But ultimately, Ronnie would end up going 
going to prison as a result, but more on that later. With Ronnie likely going to prison for the foreseeable future, along with his drug addiction, his bandmates decided it was best to cut ties with the problematic frontman, booting him from Escape the Fate. He was shortly replaced by Craig Mabbitt from Bless the Fall, and to say Ronnie didn't take kindly to this is an understatement. I mean, check this video, where Ronnie was in the crowd shouting shit at the band to the point where Max Green took the mic and changed the song name of Flood to this next song is called If I Could Stay Clean, I Could Stay With My Band. Stay with my band. Ronnie would ultimately end up getting arrested shortly after, and it seems like it was because he didn't answer to his parole officer with the initial charge of battery, but I'm no lawyer here, so don't hold me to it. It's just what I could find. With Ronnie completely out of the picture, Escape the Fate went full steam ahead with their new frontman. Obviously, Ronnie was pissed about this and felt betrayed, but matters were made worse when his replacement, Craig Mabbitt, started taking the piss out of Ronnie while he was locked behind bars. The two went back and forth with a genuine dislike for each other at the time. It was basically our emo version of Tupac versus Biggie, and it created some huge moments for his drama goblins. I mean, to this day, the YouTube video of Craig Mabbitt saying some not very nice things about Ronnie is still getting views. Fucking he missed the old singer, he's locked up in Nevada, go suck his fucking cock, you fatty. And by the way, anybody hoping to hear new shit from Ronnie Radke, he just got caught with heroin in prison, so we stay there for a very long time. So fuck off. The song is called This War. The feud went on for months, with Ronnie getting a friend to make posts on his MySpace to get his voice heard, including this gem where Ronnie calls out Mabbit saying, I didn't say anything about this before, but you really are trying to be like me. Fucking my ex-girlfriend now, huh? So tell me, how does my dick taste? And my microphone. How is it living my life? Must be pretty rad. I would know. Don't get used to it. Tensions were high. There was plenty of back and forth from both parties, and Ronnie ultimately decided to make this a turning point in his life and start a new band completely, falling in reverse. While in prison, Ronnie had a decision to make. He was either going to spend his time feeling sorry for himself behind bars, or he was going to take it as a blessing in disguise and use it as an opportunity not only to beat his addiction, but to put all of his emotion into his new venture, Falling in Reverse. And this is how the drug in me and you was born. Falling in Reverse's debut album in 2011. I'm back. <laughs> Ronnie would hum melodies, tap and sing quietly, recalling all he had was time, so he made basically a whole album during his time locked up. He went on to say that the drug in me is you was basically him talking to himself and realising that he was his own worst enemy, sort of like a cathartic release of sorts. The band was instantly a success, even considering that they'd never actually performed a live show together, but the drug in me is you debuted at number 19 on the Billboard Top 200, with the band performing their first ever live gig back in August 2011. <laughs> Falling in Reverse was Ronnie's chance to truly express his vision. As he said, he wanted to explore the use of synths and keyboards more with Escape the Fate, but he never could. So this was the beginning of what would become Falling in Reverse's iconic sound. Ronnie would incorporate synths, powerful cleans, and even rap verses into the band, creating the now iconic verse. Now, white boy on the beat, rocking Gucci sneaks. Yeah, maybe not his best line, but it really gave us an insight into what was to come for Falling in Reverse, with Ronnie recognising that while it wasn't his best work, it set the tone for the future. Falling in Reverse went on to release a few few albums over the years, but Ronnie went against the norm once again and shifted the band's focus from albums to singles, which was a huge risk at the time, but paid off massively, leading to the creation of Popular Monster, the band's biggest, and in my eyes, best track. Finn McKenzie recently just made a video about Ronnie too, where he talks about Ronnie's transitions from albums to singles and more, so make sure to go check out that video when you're done, but for now, here's a clip. So I looked to rap, like Drake, and I was like, what are they doing? And they're putting out singles. I'm like, okay, so what if I put all my creativity into one song instead of putting all my creativity creativity into 10 songs and being rushed to get it out. And that ended up being the last full-length album that Falling Universe has put out to this day. Ronnie was able to capitalize on the singles era, releasing music videos that were like fucking movies and really understanding how to use social media to stir up a buzz about an upcoming single. Ah, yeah social media. That brings me to my next point. Mention Ronnie Radke or Fall in Reverse on social media, and you better be ready to be called a transphobe, homophobe, pretty much anything ending in phobe if you dare to even listen to his music. Now, let's get straight to the point. Ronnie doesn't exactly help himself here. One example of this is when Ronnie called out Dylan Mulvaney, who is trans, for promoting tampons and tampons, saying that it was extremely offensive to women who actually get periods. The part where Ronnie fucked up was Dylan was not promoting tampons, and a spokesperson for tampons confirmed no such sponsorship existed between the 
the parties, but the damage was done and the fire was lit. And from there on, at every opportunity, Ronnie was labeled a transphobe. Regardless of what your views and beliefs are, what happened to Ronnie next is completely bullshit. He was cancelled on TikTok in July 2023, with the platform completely suspending his account. And despite Elon Musk preaching free speech, Ronnie's Twitter account was also shadow banned, meaning you couldn't even search for his account. Yes, the ban was a little bit more subtle than TikToks, but nevertheless, it was an effort to silence him. From a personal perspective, I'm a huge believer in protecting free speech. Creating an echo chamber online in social media is one of the biggest dangers that exist. You should always have the opportunity to voice your opinion, right or wrong. If you genuinely believe Ronnie is wrong, should he be completely silenced, completely cancelled, or should you be using this as an example to try and educate him and have a discussion, not completely shut him down? It seems the more controversial Ronnie is, the bigger fall in reverse gets. Say what you want, Ronnie is not stupid. Actually, it might just be my opinion, but he's an incredible marketer. He understands that it's actually better to be hated online rather than people be indifferent towards him and the band. The fact Ronnie's name is in people's virtual mouths all across Twitter on a daily basis, it's literally free marketing. I do think he believes in his own views, but I definitely think that he amplifies this to a thousand to create a reaction. And this has worked perfectly, as Fallen in Reverse is by far the biggest they've ever been. The popular monster just proved that really, the internet isn't real. And Fallen in Reverse has an insane amount of fans that are willing to come out and support the band. Another YouTuber, Fuck Nate, made a really good documentary about Ronnie as well. And they worded it better than I could and gave an example. So make sure to check out their video too. Ronnie is always critiquing the narratives, not the people. The narrative on anti-black racism and the narrative on pro-trans movements are flawed. If they were perfect, they, we wouldn't need them. Not to mention, I've seen Ronnie with tons of black people and has shown love to tons of black artists. And according to my friend Shane, who's the guitarist of the band since Masada, uh, he told me that recently a few of his friends who are all LGBT went to a Falling in Reverse concert recently, and apparently there were tons of queer and POC people there. So take that for what you will. Say what you want about Ronnie, but we need to stop this silly rhetoric of the same people claiming he is spreading misinformation and hate, and then them literally doing the same. Is Ronnie controversial? Yes. Is Ronnie a murderer? Absolutely not. Is Ronnie an asshole? Absolutely. But to be honest, Aren't we all?